All right, uh, now we are going to talk about the chain rule for functions of several var variables. So the chain rule is kind of a big deal. It is uh, fairly more complicated than the chain rule for functions of one variable that you are familiar with. So that there's going to be uh, kind of two different versions of the chain rule. Um, so hope, I, I hope it is going to make some, some sense to you. So let me first introduce the, the first version. I mean, so it's kind of the, the easier version of the, the chain rule, right? Um, Recall the chain rule for um, functions of one variable, right? So in order to differentiate a function y with respect to a new variable t, so what you do, I mean, if it depends on some variable x, then what you do is you multiply dy dx by dx dt, right? So, and it is kind of easy to, to remember the chain rule because, I mean, if you pretend for, uh, you know, for a little moment that these are not derivatives, but these are fractions, then it's kind of dx here cancels out. And what we get is just t, t, y, t, t, right? So which makes sense. So in early years of calculus, people even believed that, uh, that this was a correct operation. So they, they thought that um, dy, dx is in fact a ratio of the infini infinitesimal um, increment of y to over the infinitesimal um, increment of, of x. But of course, it is not really a valid operation, but um, it, it, it is true. Anyway, so for functions of two or more variables, the chain rule is, is well, I mean, it is similar, yeah, but yet it is um, fairly more complicated. So let me just um, kind of um, to make my, um, to speed up my, my notes, my handwritten notes, I'm going to use, uh, you know, if, if I have dy, dx, even a usual variable, if, even if it is not a partial variable, I'm going to, to write it as like yx, like if it were a partial var partial derivative, right? So like um, before we did things like dz dx, I used to write zx. So whenever I, I write the index here, the subscript, what I mean is differentiation, whatever is like the usual differentiation or the partial differentiation. So I'm... Um, I can rewrite the, 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 the chain rule as yt equals yx times xt. All right, uh, so here is the chain rule for um, um, functions of several variables, right? So I can rewrite it as, just, just to simplify notation, so wt is wx. So this is, in fact, the partial derivative of w with respect to x times xt plus wy times yt. Okay, I hope it make, makes sense uh, to you. I mean, um, if you are familiar with um, matrix multiplication, I'm later going to explain uh, how this comes from matrix multiplication. So, and then it probably is going to make a little bit more sense to you. If you are not familiar with matrix multiplication, then I guess you'll just have to memorize like different versions of the chain rule. So, which is probably a little bit troublesome, but it is doable. So anyway, so um, here is the, my, my first example, right? Uh, so Z is the given function. Uh, where x is again a function of t and y is a function of t. So how do we find dz dt? Now, uh, the point here is to apply the chain rule. So of course, I, you, you, you could just substitute uh, x and y into this expression and, and compute it in t and, and just differentiate it with respect to t. But the point is to understand the chain rule because the chain rule sometimes, I, I can't say that it is easier to apply the chain rule to, to compute dz dt in this case, but there are some other situations in which the chain rule is applicable, but the direct method is, is not applicable. So uh, let, let me first show you how, how we can apply the, the chain rule, right? Uh, so now dz dt is, so let me, let me just write it in terms of the chain rule. So z t, dz dt, which is dz dt is uh, z x times x t plus uh, zy times yt. So we've got to compute all these partial derivatives. So zx is the partial derivative of uh, z with respect to x, right? So it is, so I, 
I'm, I'm looking at this expression and I am differentiating it with respect to x. So 2xy plus 3y to the 4. Okay, so now zy. So now I'm, I'm still looking at the same expression, only I am differentiating it with respect to y now. So it's going to be x square, sorry, x square. Y has been differentiated. So plus uh, 12xy cubed. Okay, um, so then I need to find derivatives of x with, with respect to t and y with respect to t. So the derivative of x with respect to t is just e to the t. So I need to start right here. So xt is e to the t. And the derivative of y with, with respect to t is uh, cosine t. Okay. Right, so now I'm going to... Um, To look at this expression and I'm going to just plug everything in so the expression for that of well, zx zy and so on right so uh, zt is going to be zx which is 2xy plus 3y to the 4 uh, times xt so which is e to the t plus uh, zy is x squared plus 12xy cubed times yt. Uh, yt is, what is yt? It's cosine t. Okay, so this is kind of the first version of the answer. So it is a valid answer, but we, we can change it a little bit further. So we can now substitute, you know, it has x and y here, and we can actually substitute um, um, so we can substitute the expressions for x and y into this expression, right? So we can rewrite it in terms of x and y only. So it's going to be 2x is e to the t, y is sine t, plus 3 y to the 4, so y is sine t, so it is sine t to the 4. Yeah, usually if we raise sine t to the power 4, then we write 4 in, well, at between sine and, and t. So in case you didn't know, e to the t, plus x squared, so this is e to the t squared, and e to the t squared is just e to the 2t, right? So I hope you still remember how to uh, work with exponential functions. So this is just e to the 2t plus uh, 12. x is e to the t and um, y cubed. So it is sine t cubed, sine t cubed. And times cosine t, well, times cosine t. Right, so this is the second version, like right? second version, double star version of the same expression. So now it is purely in, in T. Okay, so um, this was the answer to part A, right? So this is the answer to part A. So now let me talk about part B. So part B is what is the rate of change in Z at T is zero? In other words, to um, do part B, we need to substitute t equals to zero to either the first expression, the start expression, or to the second expression. Um, so here is how we can do it. Now, so this is the, the same kind of printed version of the, the same thing. Now, um, so we may use kind of either the first version or the second version. It's just that um, maybe we should recall that x is e to the t and y is uh, sine t. So when t is zero, substituting t is zero to, to x, we get x is e to the zero, which is one, and y for t is zero is it's going to be sine zero, which is zero, right? So if we want to substitute the um, 
our values into the first ex expression that has x and y, we've got to uh, remember that x is 1 and, and y is 0. Right? So this is the, the first version of the expression that uses x and y. And if we have the second version, um, which uses just t only, then we directly substitute t is 0 into that expression and, and compute the answer. Of course, it's going to be the same thing. All right. Um, I hope this is clear. So now let me give you... So note that in the previous example, we could um, perfectly well to first substitute um, t into the... Well, expressions in t into uh, as x and y into z, and then just z would be the function of t, and we could just compute the derivative directly. So here we can't. So because in this example, we are not really given explicit uh, expressions. Um, and instead, we, we just we just have some uh, numeric information. So let, let me explain. So what, what's going on here? So we have uh, a right circular cone, right? So right circular cone. So it looks like this. So this is our right circular cone. Um, then it has a radius. So there's the base of the cone, so this is the radius. And there is the height of the cone, the h. Right? What's going on here is that the cone is kind of, at the same time, is uh, shrinking. And, well, the height of the cone is decreasing, right? So the height of the cone is decreasing at the rate 2.5 centimeters per second. Right? But uh, the radius is increasing. Right, so basically, what the cone, cone is doing is kind of is, is becoming like flatter and and wider. So the, the cone is is being transformed into into something like this. Right, so this is kind of the, the um, process here, and the question is at which rate the volume of the cone is changing. Right, so um, and uh, you know it's not even clear whether it is increasing or decreasing at, at the moment. Right, so if the rate of change is Positive, it means that the volume of the cone is increasing, otherwise it's decreasing, but we don't even know for sure at, at the moment, right? So, uh, let me let me tell you how we can use the chain rule to, to figure, figure this out. Now, um, we've got to write some information. So, we've got to, um, to, to denote the radius as, say, I don't know, r. The height is going to be um, h. Then the volume of the cone is computed by the formula uh, one third pi r square h. Um, right. So then we, we we have some some information. So the radius is increasing at a rate of um, one point eight centimeters per second. Right. So it means that uh, the rate of change of the radius, so r, uh, the derivative of r with respect to t, at a given moment, right? So l let me just write t0, so meaning that there is some, some moment um, at which kind of we are looking at our cone, is um, increasing at a rate. So increasing means that the rate of change is positive, so 1.8 centimeters per second. So notice that everything is in centimeters and in seconds, so we don't have to change um, the, the units, luckily. So uh, 1.8. So the next piece of information that, that we have is, okay, so let me erase this. So we know 2.5 and we know that it is decreasing. So the height is decreasing. So it means that the derivative of the height with respect to t at the same given moment is a negative number because it is decreasing, so minus 2.5. All right, um, so what else do we know? So we also are given the, the this information. So the radius is 24 centimeters at the given moment. So it means that r evaluated at t0 is 24. And the height evaluated at the given moment is 14. So notice that um, we do not have 
an expression for r of h or r of t and for h of t so we don't know them so i mean the, 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 there, there there could be any kind of crazy expressions for r h of t so all that we know is that at the given moment the derivative of h with respect to t and the derivative of r with respect to t is well the as specified Okay, so let, let us see if we can use uh, the chain rule in order to, to figure things out. Okay, so this is the, this, this is the information. So it's not even the complete information. So besides, um, we have 24 and 14, but whatever. Um, so here is the formula for the cone, right? So now, uh, how can we use the chain rule? So the derivative of V with respect to T is the derivative of v with respect to h times the derivative of h um, with respect to r is first right so let, let me let me start with r because r uh, comes first so is uh, the derivative of v with respect to r times the derivative of r with respect to t plus the derivative of v with respect to h times the derivative of h with respect to t so this is the chain rule so now i am going to apply to to uh, substitute the, the given values right um so the well and 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 the expressions so sorry so the expressions so i can find uh i can actually differentiate v with respect to r right so the derivative of this with respect to r is going to be um what is two thirds pi r h times uh, the derivative of r with respect to t? I, I, I've got to just leave it as is because I don't know the expression uh, for r in terms of t. Plus the derivative of v with respect to h. Now I've got to differentiate this, this with respect to h. The derivative of this with respect to h is going to be what is going to be one third pi r squared times the, the, this term so h t okay and now i'm ready to to substitute all the, the this in, so all the um numeric information so it's two two thirds pi so two pi over three times r so R at the given moment is known to be 20, 24, 24 centimeters times H at the given moment is 14 times R T. So the derivative of R with respect to T is at the given moment is 1.8. So plus pi over three times r squared so r is 24 so it's 24 squared times ht so the derivative of h with respect to t is negative 2.5 2.5 well and that, that's basically it so that's the numeric answer so it is some specific number so maybe um let me just compute it on the calculator so i prefer to use desmos calculator for everything actually um so let me show you how, how we can do it. so desmos calculator so 2 pi 2 pi over 3 times 24 times 14 times 1.8 uh, minus pi over 3 times 24 squared times 2.5 so that's the numeric answer that we are looking for so 241.27 right so the answer is uh, minus 241.27 um, this is with two decimal places rounded to two decimal places uh, and maybe we should write the units since everything is measured in centimeters. Um, so we are talking about volume, so it's going to be centimeters, cubic centimeters, and uh, we're going to talk about the rate of change of the volume, so it should be per second, over second. 
So that's the answer. And here is the printed answer. So here it's not so pi is, is left as, as a pi. So, I mean, it's up to you if you want to um, switch to completely numeric or if you want to leave it as, as pi. So mathematicians very often do not, you know, compute their answer in numeric form, but uh, I just did. So it, it, it's really up to you usually. So unless specified otherwise. Anyway, so that was the application of the chain rules. And notice that in, in this example, um, we didn't really uh, know the um, expressions for R of T and H of T. And still we, we can uh, still compute everything. Okay, so here is the chain rule for three variables. It's very similar. So the it's just that there are now three variables, okay? So, and let me show you how we can apply the chain rule for three variables, right? So for three variables, basically in order to do this computation, I'm going to just, um, I need to compute, so all the ingredients first. So, um, so all the possible derivatives. So I'm going to first compute the partial derivative for W with respect to X. So, um, e to the x squared. So the partial derivative of this is is what is um, is e to the x squared because the derivative of the exponential function is the exponential function itself times the derivative of the exponent, which is 2x times y um, because it is left unchanged. So that, that's it because the, the second term does not have x. So the partial derivative with respect to y is what is e to the x squared plus 2y times square root of z plus 4. Okay, um, partial derivative uh, of w with respect to z is going to be, now we have y squared, uh, and we've got to differentiate the square root. So the derivative of the square root is just 1 over 2 square root, so 2 square root z plus 4. Okay. Okay, okay. So, and then uh, we've got to use partial derivatives, well, usual derivatives of x with respect to t, which is 3t squared. The derivative of y with respect to t is, is minus sine t. And the derivative of z with respect to t is, well, logarithm. So the derivative of the logarithm is one over whatever is inside the logarithm, two t squared plus one times two t, the derivative of the argument. So let me just re rewrite it neatly uh, like this: so two t. Okay, cool. Um, so what is now the derivative of uh, w with respect to t? So the derivative of w with respect to t is W x x t plus W y y t plus uh, W z times z t. Well, um, okay. So let me just rewrite everything and put everything together. So e to the x square times two x y. That's the derivative of W with respect to x times three t square plus e to the x square plus 2y square root of z plus 4 times minus sine t. So let me just try the minus sign here. Now. So minus sine t. Well, and plus one more term. Um, wz is, well, y squared divided by 2 square root z plus 4 um, times times 2t over 2, uh, sorry, t square plus 1. T square plus one. Okay, so this is wt, and uh, what we need to do is we, we want to evaluate this when t is zero. 
Well, uh, when t is zero, so let me just, uh, I don't know. So there is zero here. So everything times zero is just zero. So this term is zero. So sine zero is zero. So this term is again, just zero. And so here we have the multiplication by t, which is multiplication by zero. So this term is, is again zero. So everything is, is just zero. Uh, so the answer is that, um, well, basically all the, this work was for nothing because the answer is just, just zero. Okay, so anyway, um, so here is the chain rule uh, for you. And um, here here is the detailed procedure. So this is again, so this is all the information. And this is the final answer, which is, as we computed it, it is just, just zero. Okay, so that was all about the first version of the chain rule. So please do the quiz and um, we're going to continue with the second version of the chain rule.